The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, whether you're listening on TalkZone, by podcast, through the archives of our ad-free shows on our YouTube channel, or connected through the incredible content of our Facebook page. Today's show is somewhat different in that it provides what I think is substantial anecdotal evidence for children that some have memories of previous lives, some the ability to see ghosts, and some have prophetic warnings about their own futures. The amazing thing about this collection of stories is that they came spontaneously from folks who weren't trying to prove or disprove anything, except that children can say eerie things. Yet by the power of Twitter, thousands of word-of-mouth responses were assembled on April 6th of this year, 2022, in reaction to one question posed by a tweet. Namely, what's the eeriest thing a child has ever said to you? The woman who tweeted this innocent question, Lila Sturges, probably never expected her tweet to provoke thousands of answers and something approaching a quarter million likes in a matter of days. To get the ball rolling, she offered her own child story. Most of the subsequent responses are only short tweets, some only a sentence or two long. But I thought I'd just read you a sampling from some of the first ones that came in. I'll try to read slowly and pause a beat in between to let you absorb the implications. So let me begin with Lila Sturge's initial report. She wrote, when my daughter was around four to five, she calmly insisted that she had once been married to a man named Brad Huffington. When we asked what had happened to him, she replied with a note of sadness, he was lost at sea. Subsequently, Lila added an update. She wrote, I mentioned this tweet to my daughter, who is now 21, And she reminded me that Brad lost a leg while serving in the Navy prior to his demise and that they had had five kids together. I found the thread that followed to be fascinating. I haven't edited these except to fix some abbreviations and eliminate some uh, WTFs and the like. I'll start with the first response and continue with following tweets in the order they appear rather than picking and choosing to make a point. Some are just eerie, but many imply something much deeper. I've numbered them as a guide in case you want to come back to listen to the specific uh, story again. Just remember this show's content represents only a few of the thousands of reports of weirdness from Lila Sturge's thread. If you'd like to connect with the source, check out uh, Lila Sturge's at Lila Sturge's. Uh, and that's L-I-L-A-H-S-T-U-R-G-E-S, on Twitter uh, for April 6th, 2022. So Lila's was the first. Now here's number two. Numbers two and three are kind of troublesome. One time my little sister said unprompted that she wanted to cut up dead bodies. And when I made a weird face at that, she went, oh, Don't worry, I'm not going to do it now. When I'm older, like 15. Number three, a woman wrote, I nannied for a boy who randomly said, I'm going to kill someone one of these days. Today is probably not the day, though. Number four, when I worked at a rehab, I took clients on an historical tour as an outing, and we went to a graveyard as part of it. A little kid was playing there, and surprised by us, he said, I'm supposed to be here, and ran away. Number five. Someone wrote in, yeah, I like to indulge in this, though I don't really believe. My son, when he was ages two to five, told us his name was Hannibal. He had a son he loved, Jackson and a dog, roast beef, who died in hot pipes. He had been a very bad man, and he sobbed with guilt at all the terrible things he had done. Number six. 
Number six. My daughter at four called me into her room at 1 a.m. and told me she couldn't sleep because she was worried about the boy in the corner. She pointed to the corner and said, Look at his eyes, Mommy. I think he's really sick. Can you hear his mother crying? Number seven. My daughter, just learning to speak, was listening to her grandma talk about the blacking out uh, the house of the houses during World War II as she was drawing the curtains. Grandma did not mention why there were blackouts. The war, Grandma, it's the war. Have you forgotten? said my daughter. <laughs> On another occasion, we asked her what her earliest memory was. She was about four years old by this time. I was at the bus stop, she said. Then a car came around the corner. Then what happened, we asked. Then I was in your tummy, Mommy, she answered. Number eight. My child was about five, and when I was dropping her off at daycare, she grabbed my face with both hands and said, Mama, be careful, with a very serious face. I got into a car accident about 10 minutes later. Number nine. My daughter at four was looking out the window and asked, where are all those people walking to? I turned to look and she was pointing to an empty cemetery. Number 10. A five-year-old idly while in the back seat of the car. <laughs> the five-year-old said, it's very easy to fake your own death. Me. What? Him. Was that me? Hmm. <laughs> Number 11. An acquaintance of mine's kid talked about being a Holocaust victim. They were Jewish but he was like three. He'd never been exposed to that. He'd talked about how those who died then had been reincarnated to get another chance. Again, he was only a toddler. 12. I don't know how eerie this is. One day I woke up to find my four-year-old brother scrambling eggs and cooking bacon. Dad asked, who taught you this? My brother responded, well, you taught me this. Dad, I didn't teach you this. And the brother answered, some old man in this house taught me this. Same brother, now six. My brother said, hey, out by that empty old hotel, there's little hoof prints just appearing in the sand. They're walking in circles. Me. What do you mean? They just appear? My brother. Yeah, nothing's making them. Me. Show me. My brother. Oh, I'm never going there again. Thirteen. A three-year-old announced, uh, everyone has a mom and a dad again and again. 14, a five-year-old. Oh, it's a circle. Kids just describing reincarnation at the dinner table. Um, actually, I think 13, 14 are combined. Thir the 13 again, three-year-old says, everyone has a mom and a dad again and again. And the five-year-old responded, oh, it's a circle. So, and the comment is, they were just kids describing reincarnation at the dinner table. No biggie. Number 15, there was some classical music on the radio in the background, and my then three-year-old stopped, listened, and said, I used to play the violin. Number 16, when my brother was around three, he used to talk about when he was, quote, in the war in France all the time. He said he really liked, quote, the little French nurses at the hospital there. It was very weird. 17. When my daughter was four, she started calling me Tweety Bird. 
My grandma used to call me that. I hadn't heard that since my grandmother died when I was 10. Wow. 18. My one-year-old daughter was looking at a photo of her and her older brother and very seriously asked me where the other one was. She sadly explained, quote, before you were our mommy, there was me and Austin, her brother, and another one. Where is she? Her surprise sister was born a year later. 19. A child age four. I remember being born. Parents. Really? A child said, it was dark like in a suitcase, and then it was unzipped, and it was too bright. And the parent (laughs) adds, ladies and gentlemen, it was in fact a C-section, I guess, to explain the unzipping. 20. My now eight-year-old son used to tell us all about his past life, like as soon as he could talk, very consistent and detailed, including names of his family. He said one day they all got sick, and he stepped through a wall, and I was his new mommy. 21. I was upstairs getting laundry together. My daughter was two or three. She came in and looked confused. I asked what was wrong. She said she said she'd been in the basement with the other mama. Hmm. <laughs> Here's a strange one. Number 22. My little sister had a family of bears. She would disappear in the forest behind our house for hours and come back with stories from the other family. The bear family told her our grandmother was dead. And a minute later, we got the call. 23. A little girl, perhaps four or five, once looked at my infant twins and said calmly, quote, I can tell which one is the evil one, unquote. And then she walked away. 24. My then four-year-old at dinner described a dinner I had with my great-grandmother, a woman I met twice in my life. When she was done with the story, she said, she really liked you and wished she saw more of you. I find that one very interesting. In fact, I'll read it again. My then four-year-old at dinner described a dinner I had with my great-grandmother, a woman I met twice in my life. And when she was done with the story, she said, she really liked you and wished she, she saw more of you. 25. My three-year-old would sit and stare at the same corner of the ceiling and say he was looking at the ha-has. Responding to questions, he said, ha-has were all black, had no eyes, no face, but a big mouth. And sometimes they'd hang on the staircase, too. And then we stopped asking questions. He stopped mentioning them by five years old. At eight years old, it felt like no big deal, and we brought up the ha-has. He didn't remember them at first, but then he did, and he got really quiet and said, He didn't want to talk about it anymore and left the room. He's 15 now, and I will never bring them up again. 26. My daughter, age three, said to my mother, remember when I was your mom and you were my baby? But then I died. My maternal grandma died when I was three. We'd never mentioned her to my kid. 27. When my brother was around four, he would tell stories about how he lost his eye when he was a teenager. Fast forward to 12, and we find out his optic nerve never developed in one of his eyes, and he is now blind in that eye. I've got two number 27. This is 27A. (laughs) 
My daughter, age four, raised in 100% secular home, presses her ear to my pregnant abdomen carrying future baby brother, whose gender is at that time yet unknown. What you doing, I say? My daughter said, My brother is telling me all about God, Mama. I can't quite remember anymore. He's reminding me. 28. My five to six-year-old. When I was in your tummy, I was praying for a mommy named my name, she says. And God said, yes. And then you were my mommy. And then a pause. Actually, I thought I was lost, but I was really in your tummy. 29. When my son was around four or five, he said, do you remember back when I was big and you were little and we used to eat lunch by the river? He's named after my grandfather who used to take me to the river for picnics. 30. I had an invisible little brother called Ed, who was more Chinese looking than me. My mom's father was named Ted, and he died before I was born. I didn't know his name because I also called him the Cantonese word for maternal grandfather. 31. My three-year-old daughter pointed at my boobs one afternoon and said, those are for milk. I said they used to be when she was a baby, but not anymore. And she said, no, they are again. And then two days later, I found out I was pregnant. She also said this time they should make chocolate milk. <laughs> chocolate milk is better, which I am guessing will not be as prophetic, but she is not wrong. Chocolate milk is better. 32. I worked as a therapist with kids, definitely had an 11-year-old girl scream at me to get out, at which point the light bulbs popped and turned off. She apologized, and they came back on. There was no one near the light switches that I could see. The other electronics stayed on. 33. When my oldest was four to five, they woke up one morning and cheerily said, Ginger slept on my pillow last night. Ginger was our pet cat who had died about a week or so earlier. That was the first and last time they mentioned Ginger, but it still stuck with me 10 years later. 34. At age five, my son drew a portrait of our family of four with two tiny upside-down people. A year later, I gave birth to twins. 35. Until my son was about three, he used to casually refer to, quote, the last time I was alive, unquote, and things he used to do or people he knew. Once he said, quote, I died in a fire. Ugh, I did not like that. Eventually, this stopped. 36. When my kid was two and a half, I had a miscarriage. We hadn't yet told her that I was going to have a baby. I was painting a bedroom one day to keep myself occupied, and she wanted to help me. She looked right at me and said, your baby is dead. I'm still freaked out about that. 37. I'm Catholic, and a few bishops ago, the cathedral was redone to include a huge hanging crucifix suspended from the ceiling by two wires. My then six-year-old confidently told the bishop of the time, the day the world ends, you'll know, because that's the day that cross will fall. 39. Tell this story a lot, but uh, my 2.8 year old came up to me in the garden holding a short bar of rebar and said, quote, 
This is my weapon. I always carry a weapon in case I'm attacked. Three years ago, I had to kill a man when he came at me. Unquote. Hmm. 40. When I was five, the World Trade Center was completed, 1973, and I drew one of the towers with a fire at the top of the building. And the fireman at the bottom, I had my teacher write, quote, this is one of the twin towers and it's on fire. The fireman will put the fire out. 41. When my brother was around three, he used to talk about. uh, I've read this one before, but I'll read it again because it's cute. Someone must have repeated it in the in the in the uh, thread. When my brother was around three, he used to talk about when he was in the war in France all the time. He said he really liked, quote, the little French nurses at the hospital there. It was very weird. (laughs) 42. It was me, actually, with my dad. I always wanted to be named Natasha, and I was always um, uh, asking, like, "Why, why didn't you call me Natasha? Until one night, my dad told me he had a previous wife who died giving birth to a baby who died a few months later, and the baby's name was Natasha. 43. Our two-year-old told us they wanted to ride a motorcycle. We said, that's dangerous. They responded, don't worry, I'll wear a helmet this time. 44. Nothing like what you're all saying, but my kid figured out death and a whole bunch of other life things by himself. He's five with no access to the internet, yet he speaks like an adult half the time. He just doesn't have the wide vocabulary yet. It creeps me out sometimes. 45. My bestie died suddenly when I was 28. It was a complete shock, and I'm still shook. About six years ago, my then three-year-old asked me a lot of questions about what I did before he was born. Middle of answering, he says, yeah, I remember. We were best friends, weren't we? 46. We took my nephew, five at the time, to the beach for a picnic. He immediately walked to the edge of the lake and just stared at it for a good half hour. We got lunch ready and told him to come eat. And this little (laughs) kid uh, slowly turns to us and goes, the lake wants a sacrifice. He's seven now and likes to stand in corners of the house with a blanket on his head chanting, blood, blood, blood does this at least once a week. 47. Was introduced to a five-year-old named Atlas, whose teacher said, his name means to carry the world. Atlas shook his head and looked directly up at me and said, no, it means I am the bridge between life and death. Okay, then. 48. My mother had two children in 1969, 1970, I believe, that didn't survive long after birth. My brother was born in 1977, myself in 1981. Right after I was born, she told him he had a big brother and sister up in heaven. His answer was, no, I don't. That was us, me and him. I really believe this to be true. We had a miscarriage this summer. I'd been getting all kinds of signs that the baby would come back, even to the point where one day when I was meditating, I got a message, quote, I won't give up on you if you don't give up on me. End quote. 49. 
The other day, my seven-year-old daughter said to my son, as I was, as um, we were driving, it's really sad that we're all going to die in this car. And some wag added, after that, time for a trade-in. Number 50. I was showing my then three-year-old son pictures of the family. When we got to a picture of my father, my father, my son said, I didn't get burned. My father died in a fire the day before my son was born. 51. It was more a phrase she kept using as a toddler. Thought it was just a fanciful, was fanciful baby talk. Till um, the day um, I heard it and uh, went 50 shades of pale. Turns out it was a Russian phrase her non-English speaking mom used when things went wrong and uh, the kid had used it appropriately. Her mom died before my son was born. Fifty-two. My son, then three, used to have long conversations with someone in his room after lights out. I asked him who he was talking to, and he said that Nina kept him company so he wouldn't get scared in the dark. My grandmother's name is Nina, and she died 20 years before he was born. 53. My three-year-old sometimes refuses to sleep in my bedroom because, quote, the people, unquote, are in there. And she randomly tells me people are knocking and asks why I don't open for them. In a video call, she once asked why I'm alone and where, quote, the people, unquote, are. 54. As a child, I had the same imaginary friend forever. He was a boy that I insisted was my twin brother, and he lived in my closet. I used to have dreams about this twin brother. I found out as an adult that I'm a fetal a Shamira, and my twin was a boy. I guess it's pronounced Chimera, isn't it? Fetal Chimera. I found out as an adult that I am a fetal chimera. 55. We lived close to a nursing home until my son was three and a half. On our daily walks, we would pass by it, and he would run into the grass to play and talk to, quote, all the grandmas and grandpas outside, unquote. There was never anyone outside. 56. So strange, I am a rehab therapist in a skilled nursing facility, and when someone starts to pass away, either they or a resident in close proximity will see little blonde children playing in the hallways. It's happened for the 22 years I have been there. 57. My grandma passed away in 99, that's 1999, of a heart attack. They rushed her into open heart surgery, but she didn't make it. In November of 2000, my sister was born with a white line down her chest, just like she had had an open heart surgery. It was like an open heart surgery scar. It was visible until she was about five. 59. When my son was four, he saw a picture of the Abbey Road cover of the Beatles album, and, and he said, look, Mom, that's old-timey London. When I asked how he knew, he said, quote, because of the time I tried to make a left turn, but the train was there. That was, uh, that was with my other family, unquote. And someone else wrote in after that and said, there's a level crossing in East Sheen, London, and there used to be many accidents there decades ago. I lived nearby. 60. 
When I was almost three years old, my grandmother was dying of cancer. The night she passed, as I slept, my aunt called to tell my mom. Ten minutes later, my mom heard me crying in my room and went in and asked what was wrong, and I said, Grammy went to live with the angels. Sixteen years later, my grandfather was in the hospital for a back problem and died of a heart attack the morning he was to be released. The dream I was having when I woke up, he and I were in a red 1970s Cadillac DeVille convertible going down a desert road. We didn't speak or look at each other. Sixty-one. My daughter would stand up in her crib and wave and say, I seesaw on a regular basis. One day she saw an old photo of my recently passed grandfather as a young man. She got really excited and yelled, seesaw. His name was Cecil. 62. My cousin is adopted, came to family when he was 10 days old. Every time he saw our grandma's photo, got, gets excited and joyful as he knows her. And she had died 10 years before. 63. Once on a walk, my four-year-old son insisted there were dead soldiers in the drainage ditch. He insisted on, quote, pulling them out, unquote, and, quote, taking them to the doctor, unquote. I played along, helping him carry bodies. When I suggested a medevac with a helicopter, he said, no, those don't exist yet. 64. When my daughter was four, she suddenly walked into the kitchen where I was cooking and said, Mom, you need to call Hildegard right now. So I called the octogenarian neighbor I saw rarely, and she told me, quote, thank God you called. I was just thinking of ending my life. 65. I've read accounts of children who lost parents on 9-11. They were hysterical as their parents left for work. One young girl was inconsolable and would not let go of her daddy. He decided to stay home to appease her. He lost everyone he worked with that day. 66. My young son, three or four, was also watching the movie Zulu with me. I thought the fights were action-packed, so I asked him his thoughts. He said, quote, the British caused problems wherever they went in the world. Unquote. <laughs> 67. A four year old pointed to a picture of Cleopatra, yelled, That's my cousin. She's the queen. She lives in the desert. I miss her. One time she showed me her two babies. I, ha I had to walk really far to see her. Unquote. Cleopatra had no crown on in this picture and nothing to signify the desert. 68. When my sis was three, she kept telling me about her imaginary friend, Ilsa. Ilsa played with us quite often. When I told my mom, she was like, where did you hear that name? Turns out Ilsa was the name of my mom's stillborn she had between me and my sister and never told us about. 69. I was putting my then three or four-year-old daughter to bed one night when she gently cut my face in her little beautiful hands. Her big brown doe eyes lovingly looked into mine and said, Mommy, I would never strangle you. 70. <laughs> Every once in a while, when my youngest son was three or four, he, he would suddenly get a look on his face as though he was lost. 
he'd get increasingly more upset and say he wanted to go home, that we weren't his family, and please take him home. That Then uh, suddenly it would pass, just like it had never happened. Seventy-one. When my daughter was four, she looked up from playing and said suddenly, I like having you as my mommy. You're better than my other mommy. I said, your other mommy? She said, yeah, she was mean to me and wouldn't feed me. But then I got you as a mommy. I like you better. 72. Standing next to a family crossing the street, and their youngest, maybe five, looks at me and says, quote, I'm going to take your eyes, unquote. No expression, and not a single family member even blinked. I think about that often, and it still shivers me timbers. 73. My toddler starts sobbing uncontrollably. I rush in and ask him what's wrong. He says, I miss my old friends, and tells me about his BFFs, two old men, and all about their lives. He was inconsolable. Next week at daycare, he meets two boys who've been his BFFs ever since, for 12 years. 74. On the way home from daycare, my three-year-old got sad and said she had had a bad day. Why? Because I used to be a grandma, but then I died. Then the doctor then the doctor took the dirt out of my mouth, and now I'm Josie. It started a year of her telling us about her life as a South American grandma. She told us she had gray hair, and her eyes were milky, and she couldn't see. She could knit, though. She said she used to knit baby blankets for all the babies in the village. 75. When my daughter was 11 months old, she was in the bath. She was playing with foam bath letters and held up the letter S. She said, look, Daddy, S is for salutations. She was 11 months old. 76. When my son was new to talking, he said, quote, on balmy nights, the rats chew the paint off the door, unquote. 77. My son was six or so, and we were doing a tour of the high school his older brother was to attend. We went into a classroom, and the teacher said, bonjour. He then started up a conversation with her in French. We were like, what is he saying? He was telling her about skiing holidays. She said, obviously, someone in the family is a native French speaker, as he is using colloquialisms. Nope. When he went off to high school, he did poorly in French, as he had forgotten. 78. On a tour inside Newgrange, a 5,000-year-old megalithic sacred passage um, tomb, in complete darkness with the lights turned off for 30 seconds, my two-year-old in my arms was shouting, the soldier, the soldier. And when the lights came on, he was pointing excitedly into one of the tombs. 79. Once my family's Sorry, once my wife's family reunion was at a weird old deserted campground. Bored, uh, I took our four-year-old to a rickety set of, of swings near the woods. And after swinging, he turned to the empty woods and said, quote, no, you get out of here. I'm not getting out of here. You get out of here, unquote. 80. My kid sleepwalks. In the middle of the night, he came into my room wide-eyed and speaking a completely different language in a deep growl. He was jumping up and 
darting all over the room and making low, deep, guttural sounds like he was talking to someone. It totally freaked me out. 81. One time when my son was around four or so, he said, quote, all your life is a sinking ship, unquote. <laughs> and that cut deep. 82. My four-year-old started doing Charleston randomly one day in 2003. What the hell? <laughs> I asked why, and she says the lady in the poofy dress taught her, I think, TV show, and forget about it. But a few years later, my aunt gives me this picture of my grandmother, who lived from 1901 to 1983, and I am overcome by the memory of her teaching me the Charleston. Eighty-three. The night my sister died in our house fire, she said, goodbye, mommy, instead of good night, mommy. My mom never forgot that. 'm By the end of the first day of this thread, there were thousands of replies, most of them like the uh, 83 I've just read and an amazing quarter of a million likes. I'll conclude with the 84th, <laughs> written by some wag, weirded out by these anecdotal stories. Number 84 was, there are around 5,400 reasons in this thread alone why I don't have children. Hmm. For those listeners who are hardier than the writer of number 84 and have some eerie kid stories of their own to tell, please find the show on our YouTube channel and add your story to the comments section. And for those who would like to read uh, more on the Twitter thread, go to uh, at uh, Lila Sturges, L-I-L-A-H-S-T-U-R-G-E-S, for April 6, 2022. It's truly amazing how just asking a simple question the right way provoked thousands to re reveal kids' experiences with such profound implications if listeners would like to hear this show again or any of our more than 400 archived ad-free nde interviews go to talk zones nde radio site and hit the past shows button or go to our youtube channel nde radio with lee whitting where you can subscribe to and comment on the complete nde radio library and be sure to check out our NDE Radio Facebook page. Just search NDE Radio with Lee Whitting on your Facebook app. And listen again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern at Talk Zone for more NDE Radio. I'm your host, Lee Whitting, saying thanks for listening. <laughs>